So for those of you that don't know, Brother Zahir is uh, the founder of one of my favorite brands, my favorite Muslim brands, um, called Learning Roots. So um, this week, my son, and last week, he has been bugging me, bro. And I feel like beating you up for it. <laughs> because he keeps saying to me, Abu, can we go to the shop to buy the Sahaba cards? Abu, can we go to the shop to buy the Sahaba cards? And he does it over and over and over again, right? Um, so it's uh, Learning Roots is something that has helped, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of parents across the world in many, many countries uh, to really bring up their child with Islam at its heart. Um, and I'm telling you that you will know Learning Roots, but maybe you don't know the name, but you've probably uh, used their products. Maybe uh, <laughs> you've definitely seen their products. Um, you know, I remember going to this random masjid and seeing in the middle of the room, maybe even at Heathrow Airport as well, I think, this Qibla pointer, which mm -hmm. was made by Learning Roots. So um, just like really, really amazing kind of products that you do. And we're going to delve into uh, all of it. And I'm really, really, like I said, I'm really looking forward to going through it. One of the reasons I'm looking to go through it, because what I found by doing these interviews is I get to uh, know more about the person, even though we've known each other for years. So I'm looking forward to this uh, from learning from you and inshallah, learning more about you. Okay. So the first thing I've got for you is a question, which I didn't tell you about. So it's like a surprising question, right? Okay. Um, what was 10 year old Zahir like? Okay, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. So thank you so much for, for having me on. I'm delighted it's an honor to be here with you. Uh, so the 10 year olds are here. Um, I was studious, curious, and uh, very experimental uh, as, as an extension of being curious. So I'd always like to try stuff, you know, whatever it would be. So I'd remember like, you know, any, any kind of class, any kind of extracurricular activity, I'd always, um, you know, take part in that kind of thing. And, um, yeah, just a, a normal, uh, what is now normal, like kid, you know, just exploring life and, and looking at seeing where, where interests are, but quite, quite serious when I was into something. So I'd really get into the zone mm -hmm. as it were. I wasn't like sort of, um, you know, sort of try it and leave it and move on. I really wanted to sort of master it and then move on. That, that was the kind of kid I was. And, and what kind of things were you into? Like you said, studious. Were you like a geek and a nerd type thing? Yeah. So often, yeah, I was. I was known as that. Um, so, but a variety of different things. So I remember like drawing classes. Um, I'd be really into that. I'd get books on it, um, and I was. I was really into planes as well. So I'd take it to the extent where I'd write off to all these different airlines and ask them to send wow. in their brochures, and <laughs> I'd have a whole collection of stuff. And um, yeah, when I was into something, I was really, really into it. And I sort of complete it until I got absolutely sort of, I felt like I've done it and I mastered it and I'd move on. So that's the kind of kid I was. Amazing. And what did you want to be at that age? Do you remember? A pilot. A pilot. I always wanted to be a pilot. But my dreams were dashed because uh, I later discovered uh, that I was colorblind. Really? And, yeah. When I went to the eye hospital and they concluded that through through their test, they told my parents that, your, one, one thing your son can't be is a, is a pilot Subhanallah. So, <laughs> so that was out the window because I was well, really I'm so late. glad I'm so glad <laughs> otherwise right now you'd probably be at 35,000 feet you know flying a plane and all of our children would be suffering because of it you know <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. so Alhamdulillah. just to, just to clarify color blindness does that mean that you cannot see colors or what does it mean exactly so there's different degrees of color blindness. Um, my one means that I can't see different shades of green and red. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if something, for example, is pink, I might see it as white or it's right. something. I, I, they noticed that because when I was a child and I was into drawing, I'd color like the I'd color the grass brown, for example, or I'd color the the trunk of a tree green, that kind of oh, thing. Interesting. So, so I'd got these things mixed up. And, and that's what prompted my parents to, to sort of investigate further. Okay, amazing. So that's, that's, that's really, again, like I said, I've learned something new, alhamdulillah, which is great. 